Louise Dickey, a 63-year-old resident of Independence, Missouri, used to work in accounting in Kansas City. After a serious car accident, she sustained severe injuries that made it difficult for her to walk or lift more than five pounds. Although she relied on pain medication, Louise remained cheerful and grateful for the support she received. Her daughter Miranda lived nearby and often helped her, while their neighbor, Barbara, also offered assistance. Miranda visited weekly to check on Louise and her three cats, Chloe, Monkey, and Reba. Louise had a deep love for music and even named one of her cats after her favorite artist, Reba McIntyre. She lived alone with a small family, her mother resided in Lee's Summit with Miranda's brother, and she had an uncle in Detroit. Louise cherished her time listening to records with her best friend, Kevin, who described her as gentle, kind, and a unique person. On March 29, 2016, Miranda received a call from Barbara, Louise's neighbor. Barbara was concerned because Louise's car was missing from the driveway and wanted to know if she had gone out of town without telling her. Miranda confirmed that Louise hadn't left, which was very strange since there was no reason for her car to be gone. Miranda then tried to call her mother, but it went straight to voicemail. Without wasting any time, she drove to Louise's house on East 27th Street, parking at Barbara's place where Barbara was waiting outside. Miranda entered her mother's home and called out, but it was silent. To her right, she saw her mother's purse on the sofa, along with empty Ziploc bags she usually kept inside it. As she looked for Louise, she noticed the bathroom door was shut, which was unusual. She had never seen that door closed before. When she entered the bathroom, she was horrified to find her mother's body in the bathtub, having been stabbed 98 times, with her throat cut. Miranda immediately called 911. This is Miranda. My mom's car is missing, and she's in the bathroom. Emergency services quickly arrived, led by Detective Bryce Minter, who was in charge of the murder investigation. The bathroom was covered in blood, showing just how violent the crime was. Officers asked Miranda about her mother Louise's empty purse, and she mentioned it was strange that she also couldn't find her mom's cell phone. The police requested information about the missing bank cards and tried to locate the cell phone. They also issued a be on the lookout alert for the missing golden 1998 Buick Park Avenue. Miranda was taken to the station for questioning. The last time I spoke to mom was around 5.30 yesterday when she called me. She sent me a Facebook message saying, I can't find my phone. Can you call, which happens a lot. I called her phone, and she answered, saying, okay, I found it. Thanks. I replied, love you more, and she said the same back. She didn't seem worried about anything and wasn't dating anyone. It's a cozy neighborhood with a mix of retired folks and some young families, according to a resident interviewed by Action News. Many neighbors from Louise's street were asked about her, but none knew much. One neighbor, who lived nearby, said, she never came outside at all. Some even thought the house was empty because they rarely saw anyone there. Another neighbor, who could see Louise's house from her backyard, mentioned, we thought it was abandoned since no one ever seemed to be home. A few miles from the murder scene, Officer Jason Harris was on patrol when he heard about the Buello and began searching for the vehicle. Less than an hour later, he found it parked at a convenience store on Truman Road. The store owner mentioned it had been there since the previous night. Detective Minter arrived shortly after and spotted a security camera that could be important. They went into the store to check the footage and waited for the car to appear. Eventually, it showed up, with a young man getting out and walking toward the store. They needed to be sure that whoever was driving the car was alone. They pulled footage from a different camera, which showed an empty passenger seat. They then switched to the camera from inside the shop and waited for the man to walk in. Given how violent the murder was, they were expecting him to have traces of blood on his hands and clothes, but there was no blood to be seen. He could be seen shaking hands with someone in the store, someone he clearly knew, 
before getting out a phone and attempting to call somebody as he moved into the store and headed towards the back. Footage from another camera showed him walking up to the ATM. He took out a card and tried to withdraw money, but it didn't work. He then left the store and got back into Louise's car, but he didn't drive off. Nineteen seconds later, he got out of the car and walked back into the store. He spoke to an employee before leaving once more. Luckily, that member of staff was in and working that day. Officers showed him the clip, hoping he would be able to identify the man in question, but the employee couldn't. He couldn't even remember talking to him. It was extremely disappointing for the police. At 1826, the man was seen exiting the vehicle and waving towards an approaching dark Ford Focus. The car stopped, and he got in on the passenger side before it drove off. Frustratingly, the footage was not very clear, and a license plate could not be made out. They looked at another camera from the parking lot to try and get a clearer image of the driver. The driver was shorter, leading them to believe it was possibly a woman driving. They examined the car more closely. There was a missing hubcap on the driver's side, and as the car pulled onto the road, the hubcap was also missing from the passenger side. They needed to find the car, and they needed to find the driver, so another Boello was issued. That's right, Chris. As you said, that homicide victim was identified by Independence Police as 63-year-old Louise M. Dickey. Now this morning, police were here at this convenience store at Truman and River collecting what could be a key piece of evidence in the case, surveillance video. Now earlier today, police were back on the scene of that homicide at 27th and Hardy Road. The victim was discovered there Tuesday afternoon when her daughter came to the house to check on her after getting a call from a neighbor that the victim's car was missing, and that's what brings us back to this convenience store tonight. A clerk here told me police were at the store around 10.30 this morning getting surveillance video from the store's owner. Now Independence Police have not said whether the car found here is related to the homicide of Louise Dickey, but officers also tell me that detectives are still actively investigating this case, and tonight the search for a suspect continues. As the officers headed back to the station, a vital piece of the puzzle was coming in, the bank records for Louise Dickey. It showed that the day before, at 1711, her card had been used at a Walgreens store. This was 23 minutes before her last call with Miranda. Knowing that this shopping trip and the transaction would have been caught on camera, the officers wasted no time in heading over. The footage began to play, and at seven minutes past five, the car pulled into the parking lot. Two people got out and headed inside. At the store, they purchased several items before leaving. This was not long before the police believed she had been murdered. Who was this man, and how did he know Louise? Miranda was shown the footage at the station, with the officers being hopeful she would be able to shed light on who he was, but she couldn't identify him. So the officers went back to the bank records. Where had her car been used after Walgreens? At 2.02 a.m. on the day her body was discovered in the bathroom, her card had been used again at a quick trip in Kansas City, Missouri. Someone had tried to take out $300, which had failed. One minute later, there was an attempt to withdraw $100. Luckily for the officers, this quick trip also had surveillance cameras. From the footage taken at 2.02 a.m., the blonde man from the convenience store and Walgreens could be seen standing at the ATM trying to get money out of Louise's bank account. They looked at footage from other cameras in the store, hoping there would be a clearer image of his face, and sure enough, there was. This was the man they believed had brutally murdered Louise Dickey in her own home. They needed to find him, and they needed to find him quickly. As he left the store, he got into a car parked outside that had its headlights on, suggesting someone was sat in the vehicle waiting for him. It was a dark Ford Focus with the driver's side hubcap missing, the same vehicle that had picked him up from the convenience store. They decided to talk to other people in Louise's life to see if any of them knew who this man was. They showed the footage to her neighbor, Barbara. She not only knew him, she was related to him. He was her nephew, 
Corey King, 26 years old and from Kansas City. Barbara was quickly taken into a room to be formally interviewed. Fifteen hours after requesting the ping, Louise's cell phone responded. It was showing at the Ameristar Casino, ten miles outside of Independence. Officers raced over there, hoping to find Corey, but when they arrived, there was no sign of him and no sign of the Ford Focus. They spoke to the casino and asked to review the surveillance footage from the last few hours. At 3.20, Corey was picked up. He was talking to someone, but that person was just out of frame. Not for long, as Corey walked over to the ATM. A woman followed. The police theorized that this was the person who had been driving him around in the Ford Focus. Corey tried Louise's card again, but he got nowhere. At 4.08 a.m., Corey was seen walking out of the casino with the woman, and the Ford Focus was seen driving away, signaling to turn right out of the casino premises. But as the car got to the end of the road, it stopped. Then, after a pause, it turned left instead. A crime bulletin was issued to all police agencies in the area. Phone records from Louise's phone showed that when Corey had been on the phone in the convenience store, he had used her phone to place the call, and all of these calls had been to the same number. Finally, the police would get the break they were hoping for, another ping had come through from the phone, and officers had the car in question under surveillance. It was parked at a motel. Wasting no time, officers raced over, and Corey and the woman were taken into custody. When Corey was taken in for questioning, he denied having anything to do with the murder of Louise Dickey, but his lies would soon catch up with him. Twenty-four hours after Louise Dickey's body was discovered, Corey finally told the truth. He said that during the time he had been under the influence of drugs, an argument had broken out. Louise wouldn't let him sleep on her sofa. He said he told her he couldn't leave due to the effects of the drugs in his system, but she wouldn't let him stay. He told the investigators that he had grabbed a box cutter from the house, gone up behind Louise, grabbed her, and slit her throat. When she grabbed her neck, he cut her again. He then dragged her body to the bathroom and put her into the tub before continuing to stab her with another knife. Why? Because he said he felt like she didn't trust him. He stole ten dollars, her phone, her debit card, prescription medication from her purse, and the key to her 1998 Buick Park Avenue. Okay, that's all right. Like, it wasn't like it happened in the bathtub, but I blacked out. Like I told you, that wasn't a lie. Blacked out. You may have been high on drugs, but I'm going to tell you, you got us to the bathtub. You know exactly what we know. She was killed in the bathtub. You killed her. She was in the bathtub, am I correct in saying that? Yes or no? Corey King, a 26-year-old man, was charged with armed criminal action and first-degree murder. Prosecutors requested a $500,000 cash bond. There was no evidence to suggest that the woman from the Ford Focus had anything to do with what had happened to Louise, and as such, she was released without charge. Right now, a 26-year-old man is facing a murder charge in Independence after police say he killed a woman using a box cutter. 41 Action News reporter Tom Dempsey is live from the home where Louise Dickey was killed. Tom, what do friends and family think happened at this point? Well, guys, police are saying that Corey King was at Louise Dickey's house here on Monday evening. I'll step out of the way so our viewers can get a better look. This is on East 27th Street, right near Hardy Avenue in Independence. After going to a gas station and a Dollar General together, police say King murdered Dickie in the bathroom of this home. Here's a look at King's mugshot. According to police, King has a history of substance abuse. He claims he was high on marijuana and Xanax during the murder. Police say King's aunt was good friends with Dickie. He told police he wanted to sleep on Dickie's couch on Monday night, and when she refused, he stabbed her multiple times using a box cutter and a knife. Police report that King took Dickie's car, which was later discovered at a nearby gas station. King also attempted to use Dickie's ATM card and cell phone. 
This led police to track him down and arrest him at a motel in the metro area. Corey's actions were incredibly heartbreaking for Louise's family, who are still in shock. It's hard to comprehend that such a crime took place here, in this house behind me in Independence, where a man repeatedly stabbed Louise Dickey in her bathroom. She was really kind and always ready to help. If I needed anything, she'd say, let's go get it. She loved cats and had three of them, often calling herself a cat lady. Corey King later pleaded guilty to armed criminal action and first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole for killing Louise Dickey, along with another life sentence for armed criminal action, which will be served at the same time. Corey King is currently imprisoned at the PZI Correctional Center in Mineral Point, Missouri. Louise Dickey was a loving and compassionate woman who cherished her family and appreciated everyone who helped her. It's heartbreaking to think about the pain she endured in her final moments. As Miranda shared, her mother was kind and giving, always someone who would never harm anyone. We really appreciate all our viewers and supporters. Your support helps our channel, and we're truly thankful for it.